All right, in this problem, we have 6 factorial plus 7 factorial plus 8 factorial equals n times 6 factorial. And here we want to solve for n. So my first step, very similar to most algebra problems, if I have a variable on one side already and I'm multiplying it by some number, I divide both sides by that number. So I'm going to resist what might be the urge to solve for 6 factorial. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But here, this simplifies things quite a bit. So sometimes when we're solving, of course, instead of evaluating 6 factorial, we can use it in the calculation to reduce what it really is. Because remember, 6 factorial means take 6 and multiply it by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is not a number I feel like working with. So here, 6 factorial divided by itself is just 1. Right? Anything divided by itself is 1. And on the left-hand side of the equation, we have one, two, three terms, and we're dividing each of them by 6 factorial. So that means we have 6 factorial over 6 factorial, right, the first term divided by 6 factorial, plus 7 factorial over 6 factorial, plus 8 factorial over 6 factorial, and that equals n. So how do we deal with this right here? Well, what we're going to do is well, we're going to solve each of these in, in step. So first we have 6 factorial divided by itself. Well, that's just 1, right? And then we have 7 factorial over 6 factorial. And that's actually quite nice to work with because remember, 7 factorial is 7 times 6, right? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But using the associative property, we can agree that 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 and so forth is the same thing as 7 times 6 factorial, right? Because 6 factorial is all of this in here. 6 times 5 times 4 all the way down to 1. So I can think of 7 factorial as 7 times 6 factorial. And we're dividing that by 6 factorial. And we'll come back to that in a moment. That's going to be really nice because these factorials, we divide them and they cancel out to 1. So really that's just 7 times 1, which is 7. And then here in the last step, we have 8 factorial divided by 6 factorial. And here we'll use the same technique. I can think of 8 factorial as 8 times 7 factorial, right? Which can be thought of as 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. And then we get, instead of thinking of as 8 factorial divided by 6 factorial, I can think of it as 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial. And here these 6 factorials cancel out and we have 8 times 7. So adding these together we have 1 plus 7 plus 8 times 7 is 56. Add these up, 7 and 1 is 8, 8 plus 56 is 64. So here n equals 64. And I guess one of the, the key steps here is to learn how to divide by factorials. This is a nice simplification process that helps us work with these numbers. Otherwise, imagine you'd be stuck working with these huge factorial numbers, and that wouldn't be fun at all. All right, hope this helped.